I know you've been waiting for more Grand Cru Beaujolais, so we are gonna taste this, which is what I am drinking for Thanksgiving. I feel like I should be holding this bottle, cradling it ever so uh, softly. Um, welcome back to Drinking It In. I am your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better. And uh, tomorrow, um, or two days from today, you know, depending on when I actually edit this and post it, is Thanksgiving. And um, I didn't do any sort of uh, video on Thanksgiving wine pairings because, uh, frankly, I just, I just didn't have the time. But um, the other day, as I realize I'm literally stuck to the floor here, the other day I decided that I needed to, uh, you know, source a bottle, of, of, at least a bottle of red for Thanksgiving. And um, I went to my trusty wine shop and uh, am going, am thinking I'm going with this Jean-Paul Dos, Dubos, Jean-Paul Dubos, uh, <laughs> Moulin Avant, en Brenne. So this is a Grand Cru Beaujolais from the Moulin Avant region, or uh, Cru in Beaujolais. Um, if, you remember, if you recall from some prior videos, uh, Beaujolais has 10, 10 Grand Cru's. Uh, Moulin Avant is going to be um, the biggest of the 10. So the lightest is probably Chirouves or Saint Amour. Saint -Amour. Uh, they'll be, uh, certainly the wines are still light and um, drink, you know, very, very drinkable and very pleasant, perfect for Thanksgiving. But as you get up that ladder and get to Moulin Avant, because of the, you know, the, the way that the geography lays out, and the soil type in in this region, the wines are just bigger, right? So, you know, there's Moulin Avant has often been called the king of Beaujolais, and you know I've seen it on a few websites called that. I think if you think of it, uh, if we think take a step back and think of wine in in the uh, Piedmont, right? Nebbiolo based wine. The king is Barolo, the queen is Barbaresco, and then you have a bunch of uh, regular Nebbiolos and other types of wines. Moulin Avant is sort of the Barolo of Beaujolais, and um, you know there are a couple of other crews that I would say are you know could be akin to the Queen of Beaujolais. But I don't want to get too into those labels because in the end I just need to take a sip of this wine and make sure the other bottle that I bought is suitable for the um, for our friends giving the friends giving that we uh, attend. Uh, we've been adopted by uh, local friends uh, because getting back to um, our family during the holidays with work and everything piling up uh, is challenging. So this wine, I should point out, is uh, made, imported by Rosenthal Wine Merchants. Again, they kind of do, if you see them on the back of a label, you're, you can be uh, assured that it's probably a pretty damn good bottle because uh, they, do, they don't bring in every single Beaujolais that they come across. They only bring in select few. This is a 2020 wine, 2020 vintage, um, and uh, it's 13 percent alcohol. So that's a really good alcohol level for anything that's in uh, red and for your Thanksgiving table. You don't want to go high alcohol and big tannins because uh, it'll compete with the food and um, you know and overshadow it, frankly. So let us see what this guy. Yeah, this is going to be a winner. So there's lots of cherries getting a little bit of that cola note. So you can just, it definitely has Pinot Noir similarity. So not necessarily cola. It's sort of cherries and Dr. Pepper, which is cool. This has a, a, a lovely freshness to the nose. And I don't know, it's, it's not floral, it's not perfumey, but it's fresh. Uh, so I don't know if there's, if the cherries are just lightened as they come up and hit your nose, but there's something uh, you know, there's a lot of finesse in this wine, which is really neat. So Moulin Avant wines, you know, you can, you can age for a while. So this 2020, you don't really need to be drinking now. Uh, but, you know, these things are good, you know, four to seven, ten years even. Don't be scared of sticking these in the cellar. Hmm. There's a candy-ish note to this. 
it's really delicious. There's the cherries are are just nonstop. There's enough acidity, but it's not overpowering. So that's going to be perfect cutting through some of the more creamier foods that maybe you have at the table. And this is just going to be able to complement everything that you eat and really not overshadow anything. So I think the... I'm sensing some herbs, so there's uh, definitely some herbs there. Almost like a, a wisp of tarragon. Yeah, I mean, this is there, there's no other way to describe this wine other than refreshing, delicate, loaded with finesse, and fruit. It's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good description. This wine is damn good. Runs you about $35, so not um, the most reasonable um, wine from Beaujolais, but in the end, one that you can drink now, lay down, and one that you're just going to really enjoy for a long time. Um, that's about it. I hope everybody, if you're in the States, right, you have an enjoyable Thanksgiving uh, holiday, and um, we will be back soon thereafter with some more videos, and I appreciate everyone joining, and make, be sure to like and subscribe, and send me a comment. Wish me a happy Thanksgiving or something silly like that. I'll see you soon. Cheers.